Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Pats here. One of my greatest undertakings ever on this channel was managing to upload standalone deep dives on nearly every Double Dragon game that has ever been made. Due to this, I have often been given requests to look at some of the titles directly linked to the series, such as The Combat Tribes, the cooperative beat-em-up that franchise creator Yoshihisa Kishimoto brought to the table after Double Dragon 2, which we have now already covered. And of course, there is then Rage of the Dragons, the very subject of today's video. Not only is that this critically liked Neo Geo fighting game linked to the Double Dragon series, but during its development it was hoped that it would indeed be a Double Dragon game, with many characters from the famous series planned to be featured. In this upload, we are going to look at the history of this cult classic, what it brings to the table, but most importantly, cover the changes that were made to make it its own standalone game. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Rage of the Dragons, a game that was planned to be the last ever Double Dragon arcade game. Yeah! Double Dragon, Double Dragon, Double Dragon, a franchise we have looked at time and time again on here. The cooperative beat em up that would start it all, inspiring countless other titles across the arcade medium. Eventually, though, the gaming industry would evolve and Street Fighter 2 would define another genre of games involving brawling. Versus fighting games would champion player versus player combat, rejuvenating arcades and giving gamers a reason to keep inserting coins into a machine whether they had beaten the main game or not. Fighting games, of course, would prove just as popular in the homes as they were out and about. So in order to try and keep the Double Dragon franchise relevant, the natural progression for the series would be transitioning it from a side-scrolling brawler style of play to the more modern fighting game approach. The first of these would be Double Dragon 5, and while this idea sounded potentially decent on paper, the actual execution would end up being downright awful. This game that would appear on the Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive and Atari Jaguar was not even in the same league as Street Fighter 2 and others. Unlike the games that made the franchise famous, Double Dragon 5 was not developed by Technos Japan but instead American company Leyland Interactive Media, who would program a game loosely based on the Double Dragon Western animated series, of all things. This 1994 game ended up panning out to be terrible offering up a fighting game with crude graphics, shallow combat and poorly executed knockoff elements ripped from the Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat series. Double Dragon 5 was certainly a low point for old Bimmy and Jimmy. The following year of 1995, Technos of Japan would attempt to get right what Leyland Interactive had got so wrong, resulting in the release of yet another Double Dragon fighting game, this time for the Neo Geo. This one was designed by Maneki Ebenuma, the man behind the fairly appreciated Super Double Dragon, a game that ended up being fairly decent for what it was, even though that it is missing an introduction and end into the game due to development time constraints. Ebenuma, who was a fan of the series before even commencing work at Technos, would deliver a fighter that took inspiration from the poor performing Double Dragon Hollywood movie offering up characters who had previously debuted in that feature length. The game includes a roster of 10 fighters from the Double Dragon universe, and in my opinion, is not that bad at all. It is what it is really, and less of an embarrassing mess than that of Double Dragon 5. Yuck. Sadly, the Double Dragon Neo Geo fighting game would be the last Double Dragon game ever to be made by Technos of Japan, as following the release of the game, the Japanese company would file for bankruptcy and cease operations. The world would be without a new Double Dragon game for many years. However, seven years later in 2002, a group of individuals planned to bring the dead license back to the world of arcade fighting games. After all, Double Dragon was one of the most famous arcade franchises ever, so it was almost criminal that it was being ignored. Development of such a game was underway between Japanese company Noise Factory and Brezasoft, with design chiefly being handled by Mexican team Evoga. 
Noise Factory Company Limited was a Japanese video game developer and publisher based out of Osaka. It was one of the development companies of SNK, established by former Atlas staff members who previously worked on Princess Crown for the Sega Saturn. While never producing a fighting game, they had created beat-em-ups such as Gaia Crusaders and Sengoku 3. Brezasoft is a game developer founded by former SNK employee Ikichi Kawasaki, which would later be merged into Playmore, and Avoga stands out as the first Mexican company ever to focus solely on making video games, first releasing Evolution Soccer in arcades working with Brezasoft in 2001. Avoga envisioned Rage of the Dragons as the sequel to the Neo Geo fighting game version of Double Dragon that we touched on earlier. However, unlike the previous installment from seven years before, this brand new game would contain tag team matches players. Holla holla holla. Something that made absolutely perfect sense considering the success that the likes of Marvel vs. Capcom, King of Fighters and Tekken Tag were all having sales-wise by including tag team mechanics. This format technically fits Double Dragon in the world of fighting games like an absolute glove. After all, the word double is in the freaking title to begin with, and the series has been promoted from day one as being a cooperative affair revolving around two brothers teaming up. Thinking about it, the Lee brothers, Bimmy and Jimmy, have to be considered one of the most famous tag teams of the 1980s, up there with the likes of the Legion of Doom, Demolition, the Heart Foundation, and even the Chuckle Brothers, to me to bloody you. A true tag team Double Dragon game was an amazing concept on paper, but sadly none of this was ever to be. Well, at least in an official capacity, as sadly a Voga were unsuccessful in obtaining the intellectual rights for the Double Dragon characters to be able to be included in their existing project. Instead, the Double Dragon license would end up in the hands of a company known as Million, a new company that was created by former Technos Japan staff members, with them going on to publish the next official Double Dragon game in 2003, Double Dragon Advance for the Game Boy Advance, an amazing side-scrolling beat-em-up that celebrates the franchise's roots, created under the leadership of Maneki Ebenuma, the same Ebenuma who had created the Neo Geo Double Dragon game that Avoga was so keen to make a sequel to. Avoga, though, would not give up on their goal to create a tag team fighting game, and instead their title would evolve into the game known as Rage of the Dragons, a homage to Double Dragon on the Neo Geo rather than an officially licensed sequel. The title that gamers would get would include a refined tag team combat system whereby gamers could switch between their fighters fluidly during gameplay. This has tactical benefits, for example the character who is not being controlled can recover their energy bar when not fighting. In typical tag team fashion, characters can also perform double team manoeuvres, whereby two fighters attack an opponent at the same time for extra damage. Teddy Long is a massive fan of this game. The game also features a number of other fighting game strategic quirks, which we shall soon get to discussing. However, for now, let's talk about the game's story and characters, and how this all pays homage to Double Dragon. The game offers a roster of 14 playable characters from a location known as Sunshine City that is in ruin. Like in Double Dragon and many other classic beat-em-ups, this city is a no-man's land ruled by gangs that not even the police can contain. In this metropolis, a chaotic situation exists involving a cult-like group who worship an entity known as the Black Dragon. The leader of this gang has grown in influence and has become rich and powerful, now even owning his own island off the coast of the city. He and his Black Dragon sect rule over Sunshine City and have become forever more ruthless as a result. In the end, two brothers decide that enough is enough and it's time for a change, so Billy and Jimmy set off to confront the narrative's villains. If you are not too familiar with Rage of the Dragons but have already heard earlier in this video that the makers failed to acquire the Double Dragon license, then you may be wondering why the brothers Billy and Jimmy still star in this game. Well, that's because these are now a different set of siblings, who just so happen to have the same first names as the legendary Lees. And these are instead the Lewis brothers, Jimmy Lewis and Billy Lewis, the lesser known Bimmy and Jimmy. In this fighting game, the Lewises are not the only characters who pay homage to well-known Double Dragon characters. Further to them, we have 
a babo, a respected street fighter from Sunshine City in a Bobo's place. A babo with his assistants, Linda and Roxy, more familiar first names, want to fight in the game to increase his notoriety as a fighter and take control of the Sunshine Mafia. We also have Kang, who was based off of Burnoff from the Double Dragon franchise with further references to the big daddy of beat em ups throughout. With a roster of 14 though, the game features many completely original characters too, helping give Rage of the Dragons its own identity despite many of the various obvious nods to the Brawler of Legends. Using these fighters, gamers can choose from one of seven default pairings, however it is of course also possible to create 80 different custom combinations too. If players choose to combine Billy and Jimmy for a playthrough, a secret hidden ending is revealed via winning the tournament with them, which is a nice little touch. Being a Neo Geo game, Rage of the Dragon uses a four button layout, with the four buttons each being mapped to a strong kick, weak kick, strong punch and weak punch. The tag in tag out mechanic can be taken advantage of by combining two of these buttons, which as mentioned earlier is a great way to gain back some lost health. The team attacks, which we also touched on, are known as team duplex attacks, but in order to perform them, most characters must have energy in their combo gauges. Speaking of which, these auxiliary meters are located at the bottom of the screen and can be filled by landing hits against opponents in combat. A full meter can allow for special moves to be performed, such as counter attacks and super moves, much like in many other classic fighting games. The game also includes a mechanic from Power Instinct, whereby breakable barriers can be shattered to extend the field of play. Interestingly, characters can also surrender in matches by hitting all four buttons simultaneously. By doing so, their energy can be sacrificed to give their tag team partner one last ditch effort to gain a victory. Rage of the Dragons has built up quite a reputation for itself over the years as a respected fighting game amongst connoisseurs. Fighters Generation would comment that Rage of the Dragons features an interesting cast based on the beloved retro beat-em-up series, and it's one of the most interesting SNK fighting games released in some time. Hardcore Gaming 101 too would cover the existence of this game, summarising that it could be argued that Rage of the Dragons is more style than substance, but that also implies that substance is bad. It's not. It's just not particularly deep nor innovative but it's an excellent game for anyone into late era 2D fighters, and doubly so for its rad character designs and awesome soundtrack. The Neo Geo cult would note that aesthetically, Rage of the Dragons does a good job with graphical inspiration appearing to be taken from Mark of the Wolves. They also comment on how fluid the game plays, especially when mixed with a soundtrack that has a double dragon sound to it. Pair all of these positive responses with my own comment sections last to see this game spot litten on here, there is no doubt that the game has a fan base and an air of modern day appreciation around it. Avoga, the Mexican company who designed both this game and the characters, began bankruptcy procedures and ceased operations completely in 2004, and as a result, there would never be a Rage of the Dragons 2 in the future, or a third Double Dragon Neo Geo game, depends how you look at it. The Japanese company who they worked with developing the game, Noise Factory, would live on, and several of the Rage of the Dragons characters including Jimmy, Lin, Elias and Mr. Jones would all re-emerge as hidden guest characters in the Noise Factory game Matra Melee, so maybe we should consider looking at that one in the future, especially when we bring into account that it is going even deeper down the Double Dragon related rabbit hole. The 2003 game Matra Melee, which functions as part of the Power Instinct series, was interestingly published by Atlas the same company who had also published Million's Double Dragon Advance game that year. So amusingly, Atlas had both Jimmy Lee and Jimmy Lewis in video games that they had published around exactly the same time. All in all, bringing Rage of the Dragons and Double Dragon even closer together than before. So I guess ladies and gentlemen that was the story of Rage of the Dragons, a video game that was planned to be the last ever Double Dragon arcade game. If you enjoyed this video and want more Double Dragon related or fighting game related content, I have both a Double Dragon and fighting game playlist for you to check out preceding this video.
I am the only man on the internet who seems to have been crazy enough to have made deep dive videos covering most of the sprawling Double Dragon series and its related games. If this sounds like the kind of content that would be your bag, baby, then be sure to hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell to see all of my videos as I upload new ones each and every week. Finally, I would like to give a quick thank you to those who back my work over on Patreon, making it that little bit easier for me to create videos like this on completely non-trending topics on a full-time basis. Speaking of these great, amazing, wonderful people, special thank yous go out to Sebastian Villas, The Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo, Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Omar Sr., Capcom vs. SNK, Ryan Dinch, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azarakai, Joaquin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sankey, Drew Peacock, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Marvin Liga, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs my work on the Patreon platform. I will never forget your names.